welcome to Scout Around, our weekly podcast show in which I look back at the pre-selection shows we have had last weekend. It was a busy weekend at the ESC Daily with 13 shows separated over three days and it all started on Friday when Austria selected Zoe for Stockholm with a French song called Loin DC. On Saturday, we also had two nations that picked their entry for May. Switzerland chose Rika with her song The Last of Our Kind. It probably needs some vocal improvement in Stockholm to be successful. Denmark had the voice of Australian winner Anja Nissen in its lineup, but she failed to win the national final. Lighthouse X will now go to Stockholm. Brandon McCann was in Denmark for ESC Daily. And the main question is, Brandon, did Denmark make the right choice? I don't think they did, actually. I think Anja should have actually went through. She had more of the wow factor, especially in her own fashion style and most definitely her vocals. She was such a big personality, especially in the press area. She was able to command the attention of the room. And as soon as she started singing, she just sold it to the audience. So it was really quite dis- quite a disappointment that she lost by 6% to Lighthouse 10. Yeah, and when she uh, when she made it uh, to the super final, uh, mm-hmm. w- knowing that that she had Emily De Forest backing her up a- as a composer, she was the big favorite, right? Oh, she was absolutely the big favorite, and um, there was quite a few uh, surprising entries that seemed to be gaining a lot of press, like Muriel and Mario, who sang the only Danish song to Sterna, and that seemed to be getting quite the rebel folk because they were wanting. The Danish are, of course, very proud of their own language and wanted to stay originating from it, but they didn't even make it to the super final, so it just shows that it really was just a tight race between Lighthouse 10 and Anya. Was Anya very disappointed? Did, did you see her after the show? Or? I did, and I can tell that she was quite slightly heartbroken regarding it, but she's a trooper, and because of it, she's done quite a few international shows, including The Voice Australia, she was a professional throughout before, during and after the performances. So she's taken it on the chin and she has said that she would like to once again represent Denmark, at least attempt to in Dansk Melody Grand Prix or perhaps in Australia next year. Yeah, because she also uh, told you before the show that she even got offered to represent That's Australia right. uh, last year. Yes, and she's still, if SBS contact her regarding it again, perhaps for next year or maybe even for this year because we still don't know who the representative is, there still might be a chance for it. Let's talk about the winning entry in uh, in Denmark, Lighthouse 10. What, what is the main strength of that uh, of that composition, that, that act? It was definitely the performance, because the song alone didn't really seem to why anyone. They were even quite shocked themselves off the record that they won. <laughs> they were not expecting it whatsoever. But the strength of their... There was a lot of close-ups in the performance, and especially with the, the fact they are quite good-looking people. And it's sort of following the trail that a new friend in London had back in there when you were you were in Denmark uh, for this mm-hmm. for this show. How how was the, the the vibe over there? Are they really eager to to do better than last year? Yes, definitely. But they talked the whole time about wanting to really improve the quality and make sure that what happened last year didn't happen again. But the result. It's just a lot of people, especially the Danish press, are just regarding it as another anti-social media. So it'll be really interesting to see if they can even qualify this year. We do have the influence of a big name like Katfather in Denmark. Mm -hmm. What was his influence in this national final and will he be involved in helping this act towards Stockholm? Mm -hmm. Well, he brought together the juries and he also helped in the production values, but the production really was in regards to the hosting and the postcards. And the postcards did, of course, were very executed well, but however, there was a lot of comedic classic comedies involving Hilda and her daughter, and it seemed to be definitely heading towards an older audience that perhaps the cut father has gained a lot of his credibility from. So maybe that just wasn't exactly the younger audience that was required. All right, thank you, Brandon. In Finland, the second semi-final of Uden Musikin Kilpailu continued with another seven contestants competing for three spots in the final. And from those seven, the returning fan favorite Mikael Sari made it to the final. Annika Milan and Kimmo Blam and Crystal Snow also qualified. Iceland has their final field after the second semi-final. So the next three acts for the grand final of Songva Kebnin 2016 are there. Alda Dis Arnadottir 
Elisabeth Ormslev. En for this beer na Borgers that year, together with Gudmundir Snorri Sigurdsson, made the final. There will be no wildcard this year in Iceland, so these acts will take it up against Greta Salome, who made a huge impact last week with her song Radinar. The second show in Sweden's Melodie Festivalen gave us Victoria's song Save Me and David Lincoln's We Are Our Tomorrow as straight qualifiers for the grand final. Isa has to go to Andra Janssen with I Will Wait, as does the song Hunger by Molly Pettersson Hamar. Our own editor Ellie Lando was in Malmö for us. Ellie, how was the show? It was a lot of fun. Uh, this was my first time uh, experiencing Melody Festival in live or any uh, Eurovision pre-selection show. And it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. There is now that the show is over, did this hype around Victoria. Uh, do you agree with this hype and her chances? Uh, well, I'll be honest. Uh, being in the press room, uh, there were some people that were questioning whether or not her song was as powerful as it had been made out to be. But I did really enjoy her song, and I do think she has a strong chance. Um, I think she had a very good combination of uh, stage setup and lyrics. I think it was very powerful. We also have David Lindgren. We have seen him before in Melody Festival many times. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and once again, it's, 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 he's, he's always kind of doing the, the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I felt, uh, I felt the same way, because having reviewed some of his previous entries in Melody Festival, and I didn't really feel like I saw anything new. And to be honest, in the press room, there were some, uh, I won't name names, but there were <laughs> some who felt that he uh, didn't really deserve to be put through straight to the final. Maybe, you know, in Andre Johnson or, you know, Maybe something new would have helped him out with the press room people, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't really feel anything new, different, or a new energy from him. So I'm interested to see how that works out in the final. Is it a surprise to you that he made it through straight to the final, and and someone like Isa did not? Yes, actually, um, that that did really shock me. Uh, I really thought Isa or even or Molly would have gone straight through to the final as well, but. Uh, I guess the Swedish public had a different opinion of matters than I did. Um, main thing also, uh, uh, well, also a big surprise because she was a big name, represented Finland before Krista Siegfrieds eliminated. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, we were actually having some debate in the press room before the show started about what her chances were. Uh, people thought that You know, there was sort of a, a split between uh, the people covering Melody Festival, and uh, about half the people I spoke to thought that she had a very good chance because her her song was catchy and it seemed to have a, a good hook. But the other half felt that because she's Finnish and not Swedish, that would hurt her chances. I can't say for sure if that's really what happened uh, this weekend, but I did personally quite like her song, and I, I thought it was you know a really good uh, Eurovision song, but. Again, Swedish public disagreed with me on that one. Last week, uh, Jill Guffrey, our uh, other editor, uh, mentioned that Ace Wilder could be a contender for a high score in the final as well. Um, do you think Victoria or David Lindgren is a contender for the victory in the end? Uh, to be honest, personally, I think that Ace Wilder probably has a, a stronger chance than either of them. Uh, I liked uh, David Lindgren's song. It was very positive. You know, it's, a, it's one of those songs that makes you feel very good. But I feel like overall, with the whole package, Ace Wilder sort of delivered a bit more. And there was a bit more uh, of an emotional reaction to, to Ace Wilder than David. So we'll see. Thank you, Ellie Lindo, who was in Malmö. Hungary has its first finalists. The big names, like Ola Gerge and Andras Kalei Sanders' band, made it through, as did the band Petruska and Mushu. In two weeks, we will live block the final of Adal. Estonia reached our top 10 result last year, with the special composition Goodbye to Yesterday from Elina Born and Stig Resta. In the kick-off semi-final of this year, the following five songs qualified. Mick Pedaya with his song Size, Cartoon with Crystal Aslight with Immortality, Kea sang Lonely Boy, Katilaev and Norku sang Kargol Sinust, and Laura with Supersonic also made it through. Ukraine's second final ended in three qualifiers for the final. Sansei won the contest with the song Love Manifest, and New Angels and Purpur 
also got through to the finals. The San Remo Festival in Italy has been won by Stadio with his song Un Giorno Mi Dirai. He was therefore offered the right to represent Italy at the Eurovision Song Contest, but according to broadcaster Rai, they decided not to go to Stockholm. Instead, Francesca Michelin will now represent Italy at Eurovision 2016. Donny Montel, who represented Lithuania in Baku, is still one of the favorites to go to Stockholm for his nation again. He has reached the stage of the last 10 artists in Eurovisios. Erika Jennings, from the band Scamp, is also still in the running. And finally, on Sunday, Latvia has chosen its fourth semi-finalist for Supernova. In the audition show, another four songs qualified for the semi-final to be held next week. And among them is Marcus Riva, who featured in several previous editions of Supernova as well. This was Scout Around for this week. Tune in next week as we talk about the pre-selections we uh, will then cover.